Welcome to the TARDIS. Have all of our controls, including the main panel. Lots of the TARDIS has changed. And the first biggest change of the TARDIS is the new police box that we've got, which is a new addition to the new TARDIS with a new set of doors. And we've retained the phone from uh, series two onwards. And the control opens to reveal. <laughs> and we have the new Gallifreyan light box, which I'm quite proud of how it's came out. And this one here spells Megan in Gallifreyan. Nice little, little <laughs> nut there. And we've got the foam pieces, which are all back uh, for once again, because we've never had them in Series 1. Brand new balls, which changed in Series 4. And originally it was going to have um, like a circuitry inside the blue, like all circuit boards, the silver lines, but we decided just to stick with the blue. It's also a little nod to the police box on the outside. And the chalkboards now we moved onto the coat stand. And even these parts are new now. These changed after series three, they got gated, a bit cleaner, a bit nicer. And the new addition as well is the Doctor's Victorian style chair which replaced the space themed one that we had from series 1 3. Panels either side with lots of memorabilia from Doctor Who um, including the glow which is just something the Doctor's collected from time to time. We have the brain of Morbius inside Little bits and pieces that the Doctor has randomly collected, including his very first Sonic Screwdriver from Series 1, and the chessboard, the cyber mat, and a very fun fact piece, which is just some of the Doctor most collected of his era, which is the bearings of uh, the big one from Blackpool Pleasure Beach, the roller coaster. And here we have another selection of Doctors. Memories and material and memorabilia that is collected over time, including like the Dalek Ice Stalk. Uh, we've also got the Second Doctor's recorder that's in there, and the Nano recorder, the Dalek Ice Stalk. We've got the skull books, uh, playing cards, doses, such things like that. Mod books and the photo of the Doctor and Jess. And we also have Gallifrey symbols underneath. And moving off, we've got the typewriter, which actually does work, which is an old, 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 old typewriter. And now we move around to the TARDIS console itself. Um, the console is the original from Series 2, hasn't changed that much, there's been a few alterations from time to time. Um, so we'll start with this panel. Uh, the flicker switches are still the same. It's except for we've got lights now. Time Lord telepathic circuits are there. A few new flicker, flicker switches which are on the uh, 80s console. We've also got some pushy buttons which also have like some silver pieces here and there to add a bit of wear and tear to the console. Or flicker switches here and there. Like so. And now we shall continue around to the other panels. And now we come to the main panel, which you see as soon as you walk into the TARDIS. The two big levers that we have, very similar to the Matt Smith levers from the Snowmen. Uh, we've got this little panel here, which is reminiscent of uh, Hartnell's panel from Adventure in Space and Time. Uh, we've got the Danger Meter, uh, which is always, always on red because we are always in danger. Thank you, Dan, for fixing that. <laughs> uh, a few flicker switches, buttons, sliders, dials. This is the uh, phone charger, which Meg puts her phone in in episode 6. For any R2-D2 fans, you should also recognise this as the data port from R2-D2. I should also point out these uh, rare pieces, which 
most of you will probably recognize as door stoppers. And now we're onto this panel. Uh, which has kind of a, this has changed a bit since Series 3 and through Series 4 and between Series 4 and the film. Uh, we've got these new levers which are reminiscent right, of a steampunk kind of era. A few dials, pulley buttons, pushy buttons, flicker switches. These ones are my favourite because of the sounds that they make. Turning bits here and some push up buttons. And a microscope which has been on the console since Series 1, it's probably one of the most original things that have been on the console since then. Onwards! And there we go to this panel, which uh, as a lot of people recognise is the Sonic charging port. Also Iron Man's arc reactor from Iron Man in the Marvel series. And we've got bits of Gallifrey around here. It's a bit of weakened due to a, a filming accident. One that we shall not speak about. <laughs> uh, we have some dials and some new lights that we've installed to the console just to bring a bit of life to it. And the wheel, which is also from the original first series of Doctor Who. And now we come round to another panel. Um, this section is very, very, very highly influenced off the Matt Smith slash Capaldi console with the sliders and the tuners. So the Doctor can do his old like a little bit of rap in there and get a bit of the DJ going. Yeah, like that, yeah, that's good, yeah. <laughs> uh, another one of these dials. Uh, this piece, I have no idea what this is, but Matt and Peter have them on their TARDISes and I just found it and I was like, stick it up high. Uh, push the buttons either side and two of the old retro levers from the uh, Hartnell, Broughton and Pertwee era. Yeah, uh, some more lights. Some little fiddly switches. Which this panel's changed. This dot section's changed a bit as well. Just these bits. And we've got the blue stabilizers and the shields. So for those who no 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 And then we come to the helm which is the the, the main panel the doctor spends most of his time at. It's the, the panel that pilots the TARDIS the most. So we start off with these little switches, which are very reminiscent of um, the Paul McGann console, and a bit like Matt's. <laughs> da, 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 da. Uh, two fix switches there, and some more push buttons, lots of buttons, and then two more of the turny dials. We've got the fast return switch, which is from um, William Hartnell's era. Not the same, but it's kind of like, it, it feels like that would be right for the fast return switch. More lights, some more buttons. This panel has also changed a lot since series three as well. It's had a, a bit of a tweak. We've now got these cooker knobs here, which are, uh, shouldn't really say what they are, because it gives away them, it breaks the magic there. <laughs> um, danger, warning light here, so you're gonna need distress calls. That lights up. That's where it's always lit. Because the doctor's always getting into the scrapes. We have the handbrake, which had a slight redesign to it. We have this section now going up instead of out. So it's something you hold on and turn. And it's got the locking mechanism so it won't go any further. And last but not least, the dematerialization lever, which is made from a drain pipe and some pieces of metal. And the sound is original, so it doesn't need, it doesn't really need much sound when you add it on. But yeah, it used to have the bit on the top, and now it's more of the lever. And now we'll go to a section of the TARDIS which not many people would see because it's the most recent feature, which of course is the keyboard, which uses um, pieces from Scrabble turned upside down, which is similar to what they used in the 80s. All the keys work. And as you can see on the monitor, we have a little Easter egg with Magpie Electricals. Uh, this is a real working monitor, just sometimes we don't actually include the pieces that need to be on there. Onwards! And then, of course, another big change is the central column, the time rotor, which went for a complete new design on. It's very reminiscent of the Series 2 time rotor and the Series 1 time rotor with the atom accelerator in the middle. 
Um, but it's also heavily influenced on the Capaldi and the Matt Smith time rotor with the tubes and the center pieces there. And we also have the top section, which got replaced from series three. It's a brand new section with the new bulbs in, which are, funny enough, the hemispheres we use for the Daleks. So that's a nice little Easter egg too. Another practical feature on the TARDIS is the TARDIS drawers, which contains everything from bulbs to scissors, anything that we need for filming or anything that we need for TARDIS repairs. That's where they're kept. So another feature that we've got on the new TARDIS is the ability to change the colour of the sun rotors. This is done easily with a click of the fingers, it goes to red for danger, you click your fingers again and it goes to the Matt Smith kind of colour. Uh, Calculatics <laughs> again, I'm just pressing the button really. But Capaldi's TARDIS we have. Uh, we have maybe a future TARDIS. Or we have maybe an even farther future TARDIS. Which is green. Or, in case you just feel like it, you can always just have a disco. Them DJ sliders come in handy when you're in there, don't they? <laughs> One of the common questions we get is how do we build our TARDISes and we will show you the little feature that we've got which consists of removable panels and we shall look into the heart of the TARDIS which isn't as attractive as people think this is the works of the insides of the TARDIS consisting of many wires, lights, switches and all sorts of gadgets and gizmos and the backs of the panels don't look half attractive as they do when they're in place. So these are just designed to swap back in. No screws needed, similar to the current Titus console. So one of the biggest changes we've done recently is the exterior. Uh, the last police box unfortunately suffered from typical wood rot because it had been outside for about three years. Um, but now we have the complete police box which is covered up with a sheet just for protection. As you can see, it's the full police box that goes into the shed, which is the building that hosts the TARDIS. And everything's kept the same. Uh, nothing's really changed design wise. We've still got the black windows. We went for more of a classic uh, window style with the thicker bars. So one of the most common things we get asked is how did we build the TARDIS and there is no simple answer to explain how we built the TARDIS. But uh, long story short, uh, the TARDIS is built inside a garden shed which was extended and made bigger to accompany the size we needed. The police box was then added to the TARDIS and the console is its all made of MDF. Uh, which is what they use on the actual consoles. So, and like, there's not really like a simple way I can tell you how we built the TARDIS. Um, it just happened. <laughs> um, now, there's a lot of planning involved and a lot of 3D uh, models built before settling onto this. And another common question we get asked is how much have I spent on the TARDIS or how much does it cost to build one? Well, you can build a basic console with no buttons or anything on there, just blank panels for about £100, depending where you get your wood. Um, but the total price of the TARDIS for me is probably cost around about two grand, roughly, maybe more, who knows, who knows. And then the uh, other question we get is how long it took to build all of this. Um, and the original shed was built in 2012 and then uh, the original console room and console was finished construction in April of 2013 which is when we started filming series 1. 
and then over the years it's been updated and changed so it's a project that's never 100% finished it's a project that's always going on now it's okay owning the TARDIS but uh, over time the TARDIS deteriorates uh, the weather gets to it whether it's hot or cold um, and unfortunately the TARDIS does end up falling apart so there's lots of repairs that need to be done over the year that, that the TARDIS gets used um, so the, the total cost is never fixed and you've never really finished doing like you never really finished building the TARDIS it's always going to be going on like even now it's even though it's done it still has things I need doing so when people ask me how long it took to build the TARDIS I can never give an answer because it's never finished being built it's always going to be grown and changed and become something new so thank you very much for watching the TARDIS tour and I hope you've enjoyed it and stay tuned to the channel for more content coming to you make sure you subscribe to DW 2012 Woo yeah that keeps happening it's a recurring problem <laughs>